It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The day is dragging, your energy is dipping, and you're starting to feel that familiar restlessness. Maybe you're at your desk, staring at the clock, or maybe you're at home trying to focus on your to-do list. You've had a sensible lunch. Maybe a plate full of colorful veggies and lean protein, something you felt good about eating. You even skipped dessert, determined to stick to your healthy habits. You're trying to be good, making choices you know are right for your body. But then, almost out of nowhere, a little voice in your head starts whispering about chocolate biscuits, cake, or that secret stash of sweets in the cupboard. The temptation seems to appear out of thin air and suddenly, it's all you can think about. The craving grows louder, more insistent, until you find yourself wandering toward the kitchen or eyeing the nearest shop, searching for something sweet to satisfy that urge. This isn't a sign of weakness or a lack of willpower, it's actually a powerful, ancient biological response that's hardwired into your brain. The mid-afternoon sugar urge is a universal experience. It's not just you, almost everyone feels it, especially when energy levels dip and focus starts to fade. This is your brain's wiring at work. Why does a simple biscuit or a piece of chocolate feel so irresistible? The answer lies deep within your body's chemistry and your evolutionary history. Our brains are programmed to seek out sugar. For our ancestors, finding something sweet like ripe fruit or honey was a rare and valuable source of quick energy, crucial for survival in a world where food was unpredictable. In ancient times, sweet foods were scarce and craving them gave our ancestors an evolutionary edge. The urge to seek out sugar was a survival advantage helping them store energy for leaner times. Fast forward to today, and that same drive is triggered by the abundance of sugary snacks all around us. Supermarkets, vending machines, and even our own kitchens are overflowing with options our ancestors could only dream of. Understanding this craving is the first step to managing it. When you know what's happening in your brain and body, you can make choices that work for you, not against you. It's not about fighting your body or feeling ashamed of your cravings. Instead, it's about tuning in and understanding the signals your body is sending you. These cravings are the result of a complex interplay between our ancient biology and our modern environment. Our bodies haven't changed much but our world has, so when you crave a donut or a piece of cake, you're not just being impulsive. You're responding to programming that's millions of years old, designed to keep you alive. Let's put aside guilt and get curious about your sweet tooth. There's nothing wrong with you. Your body is simply doing what it was designed to do. In this chapter, we'll explore the fascinating science behind sugar cravings. We'll look at what happens in your brain, the hormones that get released, and why the urge can feel so overwhelming at certain times of day. Most importantly, we'll uncover practical strategies to work with your biology, not against it. You'll learn how to recognize your triggers, plan ahead, and make choices that leave you feeling satisfied and in control. This isn't about deprivation or strict rules. It's about knowledge, self-compassion, and building a healthier relationship with food. Let's dive into the science behind your sweet tooth, discover what's really going on, and learn how to use this knowledge to your advantage. Ready to take back control and feel empowered around sweets? Let's get started on this journey together. To truly understand our deep-rooted love affair with sugar, let's take a journey back through the ages, far beyond the supermarket aisles and dessert menus of today. Imagine a world where every meal was uncertain, and the next source of energy was never guaranteed. Our ancient ancestors lived in a harsh, unpredictable environment, food was scarce and every calorie counted. High-energy foods like ripe fruit or honey were rare, precious finds, nature's fast fuel, offering a quick burst of energy that could mean the difference between survival and starvation. Sweetness wasn't just a pleasant flavor, it was a signal of safety and sustenance. Sweet foods meant energy, while bitter or sour tastes often warned of toxins or spoiled food. Our taste buds became finely tuned survival tools, helping us navigate a dangerous world. Over thousands of generations our brains evolved to find sweetness intensely pleasurable. This wasn't a simple preference, it was a powerful, built-in drive. When we tasted something sweet, our brains released feel-good chemicals, rewarding us for finding valuable energy. Those who craved and sought out sweet foods were more likely to survive lean times and pass on their genes. This craving for sugar became a legacy, handed down from parent to child, generation after generation. Fast forward to today, and our brains are still running on that ancient software, designed for scarcity not abundance. But now, sugar is everywhere, in our drinks, our snacks, even hidden in foods we don't expect. It's cheap, convenient and available around the clock. The instinct that once kept us alive now works against us. In a world overflowing with sugary temptations, our brains still urge us to eat as if famine is just around the corner. We reach for sweets, not out of weakness, but because our biology is urging us to prepare for a scarcity that no longer exists. This mismatch between our ancient biology and modern life is at the heart of our struggle with sugar. We're wired to crave what's now constantly within reach, and resisting those cravings can feel like swimming upstream. Understanding this evolutionary story helps us see our cravings in a new light. 
They're not personal failings or signs of weakness, they're natural, deeply human responses. The real challenge is learning how to navigate a world our bodies weren't designed for, and finding new ways to support ourselves. Recognizing this is the first step to regaining control. When we understand that our cravings are echoes of a survival story written in sugar, we can begin to make choices with more compassion and awareness. The next step? Learning how to work with, not against, this ancient programming. Let's explore what happens inside your brain when you answer the call of sugar, and how you can start to rewrite your own story. What happens in your brain when you eat that piece of cake? Sugar triggers your brain's reward system, the mesolimbic pathway. Dopamine, the motivation chemical, surges, making you feel pleasure and satisfaction. This system evolved to reinforce survival behaviors like eating high-energy foods. But modern processed foods overload this system, causing a much bigger dopamine hit than nature intended. Your brain flags this as highly significant, making sugary snacks feel intensely rewarding. That's why a chocolate bar feels so much more gratifying than a bowl of veggies. This powerful reinforcement is the first step in forming a habit. Next, let's see how this habit loop takes hold. The dopamine rush from sugar doesn't just feel good, it teaches your brain to repeat the behavior. A habit loop forms cue, routine, reward. The cue could be a time, place, emotion, or even seeing a treat. The routine is eating the sugary snack, the reward is that satisfying dopamine surge. Each time you complete the loop, the connection gets stronger and more automatic. Eventually just seeing the cue triggers a craving, even before you eat. This is why cravings can feel so urgent and hard to resist. Breaking the cycle means disrupting the loop, changing the cue, the routine, or both. Replace the routine with a healthier reward, and you can start to rewire your brain. Let's look at another force driving your cravings, the blood sugar roller coaster. Sugar cravings aren't just about pleasure, they're also about your blood sugar. A sugary snack causes a rapid spike in blood glucose, giving you a quick energy boost. Your body responds by releasing insulin to bring levels down. Sometimes it overcorrects, causing a blood sugar crash. Suddenly you feel tired, irritable, and foggy-headed. Your brain, desperate for energy, sends out another urgent craving for sugar. This creates a vicious cycle spike, crash, crave, repeat. The very foods you reach for to feel better are fueling the roller coaster. Breaking free means stabilizing your blood sugar, not just resisting temptation. Next, let's see how insulin and other hormones keep this cycle going. Understanding this process is key to regaining control. Let's break the cycle together. Insulin is more than just a blood sugar manager. It's a powerful hormone that acts as the gatekeeper of your cravings, shaping not only your appetite but also the way your body stores and uses energy. Every time you eat, insulin is released to help your cells absorb glucose, fueling your body's needs. When your cells have enough energy, insulin stores the excess as fat, a survival mechanism from our evolutionary past when food was scarce and storing energy meant survival. Today, this ancient system can work against us. In our modern world where sugary foods are everywhere and always within reach, this means our bodies are constantly prompted to store fat, even when we don't need to. High insulin levels also disrupt another key hormone, leptin, which is responsible for telling your brain when you're full and should stop eating. Frequent sugar spikes can make your brain resistant to leptin signal, so you never feel truly satisfied, no matter how much you eat. This can lead to a cycle of constant snacking and searching for satisfaction. This resistance leads to persistent cravings and overeating, especially for high-calorie, sugary foods that only make the problem worse. After a sugar rush, your blood sugar crashes, leaving you tired, irritable, and craving even more sugar to bring your energy back up. High insulin not only promotes fat storage, but also makes it harder for your body to access stored fat for energy, trapping you in a cycle of hunger and weight gain. Leptin resistance keeps you feeling hungry, even after a big meal, making it difficult to control your appetite with willpower alone. It's a hormonal storm that's tough to break with willpower alone, and it can feel like your body is working against you at every turn. But understanding how these signals work gives you the power to make smarter choices and regain control over your cravings and your health. The next step, practical strategies to stabilize your blood sugar, curb cravings, and help your hormones work for you, not against you. Let's get into the solutions and start your journey toward lasting change. To reduce cravings, work with your body, stabilize your blood sugar. Swap sugary snacks for foods with protein, healthy fats, and fiber. For example, try nuts and fruit instead of a biscuit. Pairing carbs with protein or fiber slows sugar absorption, keeping energy steady. Hydration is key, sometimes thirst feels like hunger. Drink a glass of water before reaching for a snack, cravings may fade. Keep a water bottle handy to prevent false hunger signals. Don't fear fruit, its fiber slows sugar absorption, unlike processed sweets. 
swap a chocolate bar for berries or an apple. For a treat, try a square of dark chocolate. Less sugar, more antioxidants. These simple swaps help you get off the blood sugar roller coaster. Next, let's look at lifestyle habits that support your efforts. Managing cravings isn't just about food, it's about lifestyle. Sleep deprivation disrupts hunger hormones, making you crave sugar and feel less satisfied. Prioritize good sleep to support your willpower and hormonal balance. Regular exercise improves insulin sensitivity and stabilizes blood sugar. Even a brisk walk can help curb cravings and boost your mood. Stress is a major trigger for sugar cravings. Exercise is a healthy outlet. Mindfulness helps you pause before acting on a craving. Notice the urge, identify the trigger and create space to make a conscious choice. Mindful eating puts you back in control, breaking the automatic habit loop. Small lifestyle changes can make a big difference. Combine sleep, movement and mindfulness for powerful results. Let's bring it all together. Managing your sweet tooth isn't a battle, it's about understanding your body. Cravings are normal, rooted in biology and evolution. The key is to work with your body, not against it. See cravings as signals. Maybe you need rest, water, or a balanced meal. Respond with nourishing choices. More protein, fiber, water, movement, and sleep. As you build these habits, cravings naturally decrease. You'll find more energy and stability, and less need for sugar fixes. You're not broken, your body is responding to its environment. Next time a craving hits, pause and get curious. What does your body really need? Make small, informed choices to guide yourself toward health. You have the power to change your relationship with sugar. It's a journey of understanding and cooperation, one that leads to a healthier, more vibrant you.